You can now support the Terrible Warriors by visiting patreon.com slash terrible warriors. Well, howdy, stranger. Been a while since I've seen you around. Take a seat. Have a spell. I got another tale to share with you. A story of those ne'er do wells changing stone. Ah. Uh, you thought they were gone? It's true. No one ever did see them come out of that mine again. At least, not for 220 years. Change in stone found themselves exactly where they started, just not when they started. The weird West is a distant memory. Now they have to learn the new rules, a new way of life. Boy, this is the wasted West. And let me tell you, it's hell on earth. You might hear others call them change in stone. Around these parts, they're the terrible warriors. Okay, and this is the terrible warriors. <laughs> Greetings, folks from Edmonton. I'm Derek the Bard from Chase the Muse, and I will be your GM in this our triumphant return because nobody else could make it today to one of apparently the audience's favorite campaigns. Deadlands, the adventures of change and stone. <laughs> That's the strange. Oh, is oh, it? Oh, yeah, that was like, we, we do theremins in the strange, yeah. <laughs> in any case, greetings, listeners. We were originally supposed to run through the breach, the Malifaux RPG for you today, and in fact, I had been promising that to you for the last month with various teasers. Uh, then uh, people got sick, people had plans. People had tickets, because apparently Garth Brooks is in town this weekend. All week. Yeah, nine days, man. Oh, dear lord. It's Brooksica. <laughs> Brooks Brooksathon. <gone>. Yeah. <laughs> Brooksathon. But we're not being funded by Garth Brooks. Man, we could use a bit of that sweet ticket sale, though. Oh, no, you know, okay. if any campaign was going to be funded by it Garth would be Brooks, this, this would be the one. I'm not so sure because of where we left you last time. I don't know, man. In the, in the f- far, weird future West, I'm, there all sorts is of thunder Garth can roll. <laughs> Bar- Baton Rouge could still be a place. <laughs> they still got a thing called Rodeo. It's totally... We could still... I'm just saying, Br- Garth, if you're listening. I, I, I would just I would think more that like the band that would be uh, with us is Metalocalypse. Just, just yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the intro to these uh, episodes is... Kind of more towards the metal end than anything else. So let us talk about where we left our heroes and some little changes that we're doing as we move from Deadlands, the Weird West, to Deadlands, Hell on Earth, the Wasted West. Yes, yeah, guitarist. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, that was the Suicide Squad theme. <laughs> <laughs> Will and Wes are still going to be playing the roles of Wade Stone and Jonathan Change. Because as you may recall, at the end of the fourth episode of Change and Stone, at the end of the dramatic season finale of the first season of the show, episode 12, they didn't really succeed in stopping the villainous undead Harlan Bliss from doing something with a weird rock down at Vane 6, the Comstock Mining Company outside of Virginia City, Nevada. They did, however, end up waking up in a completely flooded out mine shaft, only to look up at the night sky to see a broken moon and a wasted, just blown out Virginia City. If As I remember it, correctly, I yelled out, oh, I slept too long, a reference to uh, Army of Darkness and the alternate ending. Yes. <laughs> well, you did sleep too long. And this game is actually going to take place one year later at the season premiere of The Adventures of Change in Stone, season two, where they lost the Deadwood uh, sets. <laughs> 
Because HBO said that they didn't want to attempt to compete with um, with Westworld. Mm. Wait, is Westworld HBO? No, it's... Uh... Uh, I think it's HBO. Yeah, uh, that is HBO. There you go. They didn't want any extra competition for Westworld while it was on to, the air. They had to pay for Anthony Hopkins. Mm. They're not going to have any competition. Exactly. But they did have all these, for some reason, leftover Mad Max sets. <laughs> yeah, they but only from, like, go- the aborted post-apocalyptic show that they were going to do or something yeah. like that. The, the Not the Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, this is sort of like their attempt to challenge into the Badlands. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then I go for my notes. We're doing two small adjustments to the system today, however. Because it's post-apocalyptic, and everyone knows how much I love Fallout, we're not going to be using poker chips uh, today. We are instead going to be using bottle caps. Many, many lovely bottle caps. Yeah, I got some Coca-Cola here, uh, something with a rooster on the top of it. Yeah, the, uh, the gentleman ginger beer with the guy with the eye patch. Oh, that's very classy. Yeah, old time. Awesome. Yeah, old time. So and good. of course, my personal drink of choice, Smirnoff, because nothing says uh, I can get you white girl wasted like Smirnoff ice. <laughs> I don't even know why I have Smirnoff bottle caps. Oh, hey, you got a cap off Hobgoblin. This shit's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> In which we learn more about Derek's drinking habits. I'd be more concerned if it was like cheap beer, cheap beer, cheap beer. Man, you got a problem. <laughs> and the cheapest stuff doesn't really come in bottles, though. Well, that's true. I guess Axe Head. If it was Axe Head, you'd have a problem. Yeah. yeah. We fa- My favorite lager, Hoff Brow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is it made by the Hoff? We say yes. I like to think so. He's very popular in Germany. <laughs> So, the game now starts 200 years in the future, and there is one little bookkeeping thing that I forgot to add to your sheets. Hmm. First of all, you both have armored clothing now, because it's the post-apocalypse and everyone's a badass. Mm -hmm. Second of all, Wes, as you may recall, you lost your Gatling pistol down the shaft of uh, Vein 6. Mm -hmm. In the last year... You've picked up a submachine gun. Oh, sweet. (laughs) Nice. Will, the question is, did you keep your Peacemaker, did you upgrade to a more modern weapon? Ooh, what would Stone do? Well, I mean, the nice thing about a revolver is it just fucking works. There's not a lot that can go wrong with one of those things. You say that now. But, of course, you know... Finding parts when it does break. Yeah, exactly. Um... I think the question would be, did he have to? Uh, and I'm willing to let the dice decide this. No, no, you don't. You don't have to upgrade. No, no, I'm thinking in terms of in that in that intermediate year, would do the meta you, plot pressure do it? Do you want to? Because well, one of the things we're going to be doing in this game, because we're a year later, I'm going to be occasionally calling to you guys to uh, look at some flashbacks of what you've been doing and how you've gotten into certain situations in the last I'm year. I'm going to deposit this to you right now as one of these pro- uh, little uh, asides. I forced you to change. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll right. Buy like, that. A, like I've stumbled across something that's like, like the dirty, hairy, like yeah. type gun, and I'm like, okay, like it's like a revolver, but it, look at the size of the bullets. Like, oh, well, <laughs> cartridges. Well, I don't do, know. do you want to use a 357 Magnum, or do you want to stay within the Colt line and pick yourself up a good old fashioned Colt T Colt 1911A? Ooh, brand loyalty. That's exciting. Um, but no, I, I think if Change was the guy who was rooting for Change, yeah. uh, eventually I, w- I would have succumbed. You want to get a 357 get Magnum? get a 357 Magnum. Okay. Um, oh, it does the exact same. No, no we're going to give you the bigger Magnum. Um, uh, the more does, Magnum Magnum. <laughs> the Ruger Red Hawk. Oh, God. Those things are awesome. Uh, it does 4d6 damage. I love it. Instead of 3d6. So it actually does an extra die. Um, Wes, then the question to you is, your are two options. One, do you want to go German and pick up a Heckler and Koch machine gun? Or, do you want to go with an American classic and carry a Tommy gun? <laughs> what I think is really, really funny is if I pushed a modern gun on him and I picked up, like, a Tommy gun. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because we wouldn't have a concept that... The, You've never seen a Tommy gun. Yeah, no, it's, it's still a it's super high tech future gun to us. To us, right? Like it's just that his is more high tech than mine for some strange reason. Although it doesn't look as high tech. Which However, is cool. actually, the Colt nineteen eleven I think was released before the Thompson. So okay. Oh yeah, but I'm just like in terms yeah. of 
no, the Super Red Hawk is just a giant. Oh yeah, yo, you, sorry, you got the you got the three fifty seven Magnum. Yes. Yeah. Um, however, there's a concept that can be played with that. I got like the Heckler and Kosh, but it's like it was like some brass stars that I found in like a like under some rubble. And it's like gold plate. Oh <laughs> yeah, like that. Like there's a, there's some there's you got some, a rich man's gun. Yes, I got a rich man's gun. So yeah. that's a, what do you think? Did, did the rich man's gun sound? I kind of like the idea that there's. I think I like that there's an implied adventure that happened there. Yeah. Where we somehow got this rich man's gun. Yeah. Like, maybe there was, like, a comic adaptation or, like, a novel that came out in between or, like, a fan letter writing thing to save the series. Yeah. That that resulted in the, the rich man's gun story. Yeah. And this is a call out to that. But maybe it was, like, a like a prequel episode that was, like, a webisode. The oh, rich man's gun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they did a made for TV movie. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, like the, the, I imagine maybe like just in the terms of the series, there was a space and time, kind of like a Firefly X cancellation. That's exactly what I was picturing. Yeah, and then like, uh, the, the, like they aired it on like a regular network to get like it back on the show. There was it was the it was the Rich Man's Gun was the name of it, and it was like its own little adventure. And then huge like fan writing support. Oh, no, you know what it was? Hmm. YouTube fan movie. Yes. yes. Hashtag too weird to live, too cool to die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that's the first thing I end up writing down here. Re- <laughs> that, that seems too good for me to have just made it up. I really hope I didn't. I hope that's not a reference. Our, if it's a reference or something, we're sorry. <laughs> As Derek writes slowly, <laughs> too good to die. Too cool to die. This is also a nice little wink and a nod to one of my LARP characters who literally has a golden Nerf gun as his primary gun. Rad. <laughs> oh, so it makes me happy. And there is one other bit of bookkeeping. See, as I was going through the source books for this game, I came across something really funky, which is that the moment Derek actually figures out what... Ah, here we go. There is actually a trait in the game for uh, Deadlands characters carried over into Hell on Earth. Sweet. It's called Veteran of the Weird West. I want you to each draw me a card. And this is going to add to your existing problems. I like like problems. Problems are fun. (laughs) And we may have to work this into resolving what happened to you in the last year. Ten of diamonds. Okay. Wes, ten. (laughs) <laughs> Did you get the rules card? <laughs> you got the rules card! I literally got a uh, the identifier card. Bicycle, 1885 to 2012, Heritage Deck. Because I'm that kind of nerd. Why didn't you take that out? <laughs> we had a whole conversation about this. <laughs> we did, but uh, you'll recall from the last uh, four episodes, I'm a very bad shuffler, and I literally just didn't notice it was still in there. Wes, draw twice. Don't shuffle that ten. Yeah, just shuffle that ten back in. Shuffle the ten back in. Meanwhile, Will... Get to... <laughs> if you draw a ten, you have to uh, draw twice from a different chart. I love this. Uh, I got a seven of hearts. Okay. Will. The hero's love did not age with him, uh, with her, and his loss haunts her greatly. She has a death wish. Oh. So somebody that you love uh, that didn't show up in the last... Uh, set of episodes somehow lived 200 years to the future and has a death wish it can't be Serena no of course it's not Serena no I'm assuming she's a like a brain in a tank somewhere um okay Wes you got a 2 and an 8 yeah uh (laughs) what the hell well that's always good yeah I guess I am jinxed something you encountered cursed you your luck's fine but your companions suffer minor mishaps constantly and actively (laughs) had the bad luck hindrance (laughs) write down jinxed (laughs) and an 8 oh wow draw another card (laughs) That it doesn't fit with the cinematic nature of this show. Three diamonds, three hearts. Three Hunted, three. you didn't finish a job. A group of cultist black hats muties or an abomination is, of some sort is looking for you. Well, that's great. It's the it's the rich man. Yeah, <laughs> you got his gun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay. well, that uh, the one that you originally drew with the eight was disfigured, oh, okay. which is ugly as sin. Uh, this doesn't fit with the cinematic nature of this game, and then, uh... Well, it could be Hollywood ugly with a single tiny scum. Man, there are some really good ones that you guys didn't get. I mean, I'll take more problems. 
Do you want it? No, no, we'll we'll uh, we'll leave off there. One of my problems literally gives you more problems. I guess that's true. <laughs> it's true. Also, there's a chance you might roll a four, in which case you become a vampire. So let's not go with that. Fair enough. <laughs> it's it's a very silly rule. Wow, we really are turning into supernatural. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. So my notes, and we're gonna open up. Uh, you know, it's one year. You know, it fades to black as the motorcycles start riding towards you. One year later, and you're in Carson City, Nevada, which is actually very close to Virginia City. Mm-hmm. And when you think of Carson <clears throat> City, I want you to think of somewhere <clears throat> like um, Diamond City out of Fallout Four or Megaton out of Fallout Three. <clears throat> It's the ruins of... Well, I guess not even Megaton. More Fallout 3 didn't really have a good settled... Oh, uh, the pit, almost, then. Maybe a Prim Nevada a little bit? or Yeah, like Prim, Nev- like Prim in, uh, in New, New Vegas, Vegas, where it's built around an existing city. Mm-hmm. And they're actually doing a fairly decent trade. They're, they're a trading hub. Mm-hmm. They've got walls made of junk built around the city. Mm-hmm. There's a mayor. There's a rough form of local government. Mm-hmm. There's guards going around in like scavenged military armor. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming with like the, the tech level of this, like you said, there's motorcycles approaching, so vehicles are. You are of... 200 years in the future, right? Just over. You are in 2094 now. Okay. You were in 1873, I believe. Last we uh, yeah. played. Mm-hmm. So you're actually 200, 221 years later. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, what you know is, in uh, this is 13 years after, essentially, the apocalypse. Nuclear, uh, they dropped ghost rock bombs. Instead of atom bombs, they're, um, instead of using plutonium, they used ghost, irradiated ghost rock in them. Of course they did, because, you know, like, let's just shove this in a nuclear weapon and see what happens. I mean... It's yeah. the American the way. way. Yeah. <laughs> Blowing things up. Yep. God, don't blow things up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but they blew up most of the major cities, and it was essentially a split. It was um, the new Confederacy versus the North. <clears throat> oh. And those old tensions ran hot, and America never properly reunified um, after the Civil War ended. Okay. And when that happened... The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse showed up. Like, literally showed up. Hmm. War, famine, death, and pestilence stalked across the world and brought plagues of zombies with them. Yay. Special, like, thematic zombie. Each of them has their own thematic kind of zombie. Neat. And that didn't go so well. So now there's supernatural monsters. There's technological monsters. There's mutants. There's radiation storms. There's the remnants of the four freaking horsemen of the apocalypse running around. And society has just kind of collapsed. Mm. And you two have fallen into the role of what's called law dogs. Law dogs are a loose confederacy of mostly like-minded marshals... um, and the like, men who are bringing some form of justice to the West. Mm-hmm. Mind you, this doesn't always work so well for you. It's a pretty unjust time. There are raider gangs roving about. Yeah. There are cults. Carson City, about eight, ten years ago, um, was attacked by a group called the Doomsayers, which is this crazy ass cult out of, I think it's Vegas. Uh, who literally worship radiation. They're like the children of Adam, except they have actual superpowers. Great. Huh. <laughs> uh, they were repelled... They and the mutant king, who's their leader, were repelled by Carson City. They fell back to Virginia City, which they basically blew the fuck up, and then fell back to Vegas. Okay. Okay. Uh, there are Templars riding around the west out of the city of Lost Angels. Hmm. There are, uh, there's General Throckmorton and his black hats out of Denver, who are pretty much um, your standard dystopian, uh, post-apocalyptic totali- uh, totalitarian government. Mm. I don't get along with them. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. So as the game opens, it's going to see you 
sitting in a bar in like Carson City's sort of main marketplace. The bar is not even a full building. It's uh, built into like the burned out facade of another bar. Nice. And somehow, perhaps at your insistence, a big clapboard sign over it uh, reads in like badly hand painted letters The Independent. Nice. <laughs> and we'll open on you two. Let's make some conversation. <clears throat> so the camera sort of pans through the crowd and we see the independent. Um, there's not, like, again, it's mostly an open air tavern. Yeah. Um, there's not even really walls, but there is that one facade that has swinging saloon doors that the camera goes through. <laughs> um, and yeah, it comes up to the bar. Uh, and sort of pans over, like, the uh, sort of weird menagerie of horrible bottles of just awful gack. There's a whole bunch of bottles, for some reason, of very dusty Dr. Pepper. Yes. <laughs> because Dr. Pepper, as per the wasted, uh, as per the Hell on Earth core book, is the Nuka-Cola of this setting. Okay. <clears throat> it's the most expensive drink there. Yeah. It, it's like, yeah, the top shelf stuff. Um, so, yeah, can, camera goes, focuses on the Dr. Pepper, comes down onto the bar to... Just the worst hat. <laughs> you still got that hat. He still has that oh, hat. Uh, and yeah, Han comes in, picks up the hat, puts it on his head. Um, and then you get to see Stone in the future. Um, he's got a few new sort of fresh, weird scars. Uh, maybe some sort of animal or something scratched him on the face. Um... Whereas before, you know, he sort of had, uh, like, a, a loose sort of collection of things that had originally been part of sort of his, his uniform and, and his sort of previous life. Now, he's sort of been trying to find things like that and kind of failing. Um, so, you can see, like, he does have a bandana. That was, it's one of those terrible, like, half-skull masks. So, you worked to, still work, managed to work a lot of blue into your... Oh, uh, as much outfit. blue as possible. Um, but yeah, he's got one of those like horrible half skull bandanas that you can see he's wearing inside out. It's just the only bandana he could have that fits. He doesn't care about the skull part. Um, and yeah, like sort of like a, a blue <coughs> sort of like motorcycle leathers underneath for like the waistcoat and stuff. Um, and it's, it's that sort of like breakaway sort of motorcycle uh, gear. So it's it's kind of armored. Um, got a, a fairly nice slicker over that. Um, tattered here <coughs> and there. Uh, obviously, some parts of it aren't original. Um, patchwork clothing. Very patchwork. And everybody in the bar is wearing very, very much patchwork clothing. Um, you know, it's a pair of jeans that's made out of four other pairs of jeans. And yeah. That kind of thing. Very much. Some guy's wearing the obligatory, like, half a tire over his shoulder. Yes. Um, there's crossbows for some reason everywhere. Yeah. Um, well, you can retrieve the bu uh, the bolts. You can't retrieve a bullet. Exactly. Um, it's quieter, but not by much. Uh, anyways, so yeah. Puts his hat on. <clears throat> Well, I spent all my cash. Well, a good thing for you that I had a good uh, winnings at the uh, poker table. And along such Jonathan Change, who has adapted very well to this setting, being a man of science from before. Uh, basically, uh, you know, the, the camera pans over. Um, I'm imagining, like, uh, a, a hack to keep the sun off. Um... The kind of like eight what kind of hat? Oh, that's a good question. Like mm. I was thinking, like either like a like um like either like a cowboy hat or possibly like um like like a, I was actually thinking maybe a, like a friggin' top hat or something like yeah that. or like it it gets a little too wacky races, but I was imagining like a pith helmet. <laughs> um, no, I don't want the pith helmet. No, no, it's too. So it's not classy enough, right? Yeah. Well, also, uh, also keep in mind that you're not burdened anymore by historical headwear. This is true. Yeah. Um, you know what? Uh, Could be a bowler, ball cap, like an actual like okay. ball cap, right? Because again, changes yep. being a man of science, he probably would have adopted quicker than you would have. Oh sure. yeah, no. Who's it for the ball cap? Is there an emblem on it? Or yeah, let's go with the. He found somehow in the desert a Montreal Canadiens ball cap. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Right, it, it, it's in relatively good condition, and then like the rest of his attire is 
very much like it looked like he somehow he must have found like an image or a video of the friggin' road warrior so that like all leather with like the one like uh like yeah, shoulder yeah, pad everything. right like the one except on- it's all mismatched leathers and stuff <laughs> no i would spend the money to make it friggin' matched <laughs> okay <laughs> because it's, i'm the man in black i have a, a, a thing to all right did you add well are you doing the road war thing or are you doing more like the black because you always had like the big black coat as well yeah. Uh, or have you gotten one of those and maybe just like armored it up and stuff? On? Yeah, maybe that, that would also work too. The one thing I was like, kind of imagining too is like the post-apocalyptic like um, the goggles. goggles that I'm wearing up yeah. on the hat, right? Um, yeah, probably God, the you look like a post-apocalyptic trucker. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like it, it's all very utilitarian, but it's also supposed to make yeah. it look a little classy and stuff like that. Um, a what looks like a what's left remnant of like a poncho that he like has half on almost like a quasi like cape in a mm, way right yeah. like just all stuff to keep like the dust out of the yeah and then of course on the back is the gold Hetchler and Kosh gun nice. <laughs> <laughs> gold plated gun <laughs> so yeah I, I sit down and go you know. I'm constantly dusting up myself off. Like it's just, I just imagine like we're in we're in the Nevada desert. It's a post-apocalyptic thing. Dust is just a fact of life, and yep. I freaking hate it. <laughs> yeah, Stone for his part does not care. He he what didn't avoid the dust in the past. He's certainly not avoiding it in the future. Well, luckily for you, I won very well at the poker game. I just maybe we should spend it not at the independent. Well. Do you have a suggestion? No, but I may have swindled a few people. <laughs> there, there is definitely uh. a, uh, a, a bit of a commotion rising up from one table in the back. Uh, that would be it. All right. That's there's it. a particularly large man over there. He stands at least about a foot taller than everyone else. He is built like a brick wall. Um, he's wearing the rema- like constantly patched together remains of an American military uniform. Um He's got, like, veins kind of standing out on his neck. You, you guys are aware that they they apparently did some very strange experiments on people uh, after you uh, happened to uh, sit out a spell from the world. Mm-hmm. And that he may, in fact, be one of those. They're known to be... These super soldiers are known to be very strong, very quick-tempered, and not always the brightest. I believe that's our cue to leave, friend. Yeah, Timmy's really upset. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Timmy, you need to calm down, boy! Now, now, now Big Tim, you, you, you don't... Don't need to go start nothing here. But, but that was my money. I didn't scam him. I okay, the guy who was talking him down. Let's get out of here before We're going to use our money to buy bourbon. Now, now Big Tim, we, we still got some money left. We, we'll buy a bourbon. You just don't want to start a commotion inside the Independent. Man- management does not take kindly to that. Uh, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you exit as T- Big Tim's friend is still trying to comfort him down. Various sort of faint crashing sounds begin. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so you walk out into this marketplace, walk out and the it, market. it very much is sort of that Diamond City style marketplace where everybody's got like it's a bazaar. Yeah, they've got stalls. Everyone's talking goods. Uh, there's a lot of stuff like hydroponically grown, excuse me, hydroponically grown um, mushrooms and soybeans. Is there a robot selling noodles? <laughs> no. Okay. Nobody really trusts robots that much okay. on account of them mostly being built as killing machines. There okay. are people selling that, uh, selling like noodles and the like, though. Um, the the war caused a fairly large diaspora across the country as people were just fleeing away from the destroyed cities. <laughs> so you'll get the middle of the Nevada desert where, uh, in Carson City, where there is a guy that like a Japanese like ramen chef. Who used to run some big name restaurant um, out on the West Coast? Who's now like I'm selling noodles, <laughs> handmade noodles. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, uh, so I think at this point we're looking for work. Okay. Well, it just so happens that work finds you. As you are walking through, and Derek tries to find... Where did I put the names down? I put the names right here. Excellent. Um, a man... Uh, sho- you know, the camera pans as a man shoving his way through the crowd. Uh, he's got this big, loaded-down backpack. 
Uh, he uh, he's this really kind um, wiry guy. Like he was skinny, but he put on a lot of hard muscle and um, without really having the protein to kind of back it up with bulk. Uh, he's got wire rim glasses that have. They're literally just be- being held together like four different places with duct tape at this point. And he makes a beeline for you, Wes. Not because it's you, but because you have that dusty gold gun on your back. Aw, oh, damn it. Oh, <laughs> I- excuse me, sir. Sir? You with the gun there, sir. Uh, look, look, <laughs> Half a dozen people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look, look, I've already paid my debts. Like, it's fine. You can tell Johnny that, like, we're all good. I imagine, like, I don't know. I, I've, I've been scamming a lot of people to make men's meet, all right? Like, I imagine uh, Jonathan Change has turned a little bit of a hustler just to yep. make things work, right? Like, I've heard about that gun before. Have you now? Yeah, I think I, I saw a picture of it in a book one time. That's a... You two... Must be mercenaries. Are you mercenaries? I don't really like to. Absolutely, Strong. we are. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, because I need a couple of mercenaries who are, well, I'd like to say trustworthy. I'm hoping you're trustworthy. A certain degree of trustworthiness. And I can see that you two individuals have a degree of trustworthiness about you. Yes, we absolutely trust each other. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, that's... A- a- excellent, like a couple of heroes out of the old stories. Wonderful, wonderful, perfect, just, just perfect. Anyway, we we, we don't have much time. Let's go. Uh, now hold on there, friend. <clears throat> before we're uh, before we're gonna be taking your employ. Uh, what 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 again do you want us to be doing? Well, I already told you we have to go. I I might have missed that. Don't worry. It's, you're not drunk. I missed it too. When you want to employ someone, you usually tell them on the job and how much. Now, I understand you don't want to talk about it out here in the open. Uh, do you want to give me an overall check? So it's your uh, uh, Wes. That's your Mien plus your overall. So that's 6010. Okay. We're going to keep using our little uh, adaptation. We're just going to roll your attribute plus your trait rather than just your trait because I like all them dice. No! The first die roll on the floor of the game. It should almost be a drinking contest now. <laughs> all right. Do I add them all together? Or? Nope. The highest. So nine? Yep. You rolled uh, all six? Oh, oh, yep. Two nine. Yep. Great. I'll take the nine. No. Oh. Oh, yes, I didn't tell you. I'm sorry. This, I'm just very very excited and, of course, in a rush. And it's all... Mm-hmm. My name is Nathaniel Salton. I'm a librarian. Oh. And you guys have heard of the librarians. Uh, they, like, capital L librarians. Mm-hmm. They're a faction out here. I almost want to say, yeah, it's a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> no, so... Um, the librarians are a group out of Sacramento who attempt to preserve old knowledge, books, Mm. magazines, anything written down. Um, These guys have a reputation, and their reputation is that they will do anything when it comes to old books. Cool. Cool. Well, in any case, it has come to my attention that there is a cache of useful information still within the ruins of Virginia City. And of course, Virginia City is a very, very unpleasant town at the moment, you know, as it was destroyed by the Doomsayers and then plagued by bandits. And I would like you to assist me in finding that information and then returning it to the Grand Library in Sacramento. I can make it worth your while. First of all, shall we say... $500 now and $500 on return to Sacramento. All right. Which is a... It's a fair bit of money in the Wasted West. Yeah, it's not too bad at all. <clears throat> I'm not even sure why they still use dollars, but it's only 13 years after the apocalypse. Yeah. They haven't quite had a chance to adapt the bottle cap standard yet. <laughs> or something else entirely. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's... Uh... Payable in cash or in equipment. Uh, uh, now you're talking. <clears throat> all right. Um... So yeah, Stone kind of lights up a little bit at the mention of equipment and a, a look is exchanged. He did, however, mention Virginia City. Oh yes. And let's let us flash back now to uh, 
something that um, I'm going to throw you a scene, and then the next flashback will go Will and then Wes. Okay. Uh, so flashback to one year ago, and it's actually um, it's. Uh, the two of you, you're crawling, soaking out of this mining tunnel. And a gang of about six guys on motorcycles ride up. And they're in full, like, Raider wa- Road Warrior gear. Um, everyone who has hair has it, like, spiked up or shaved in weird ways. Some of it's dyed. Um, anyone who's bald has, like, crazy tattoos all over their heads. Uh, they're hooting and hollering. They're waving weapons in the air. And, you know, Howdy, boys! Look what we got us here! Got us a couple of drowned desert rats. All right, listen there, folks. We don't want no trouble. You just shove off. What? What? What the hell's going on? I don't know. Are they are the engines? No, you don't, no you, you, you don't even seen. know what the hell they're on. No, I, mean, I don't. I uh, this is... looks like a locomotive, but off the rails. Like what? <laughs> yeah, some sort of steam cart. I don't know. What do you think, Rufus? Wait. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, big guy gets off of like the uh, the the rest of the guys are on like desert. Uh, they're designed for like desert riding, like dirt bikes. Yeah. And then the, there's one guy in the middle on a big Harley Davidson. Uh, he gets off and he's got like chains with hooks on them hanging off of his leathers. And there's a giant shotgun strapped to his back. And he. He flips up his, like, um, Smokey the Bear, like, Highway Patrol aviators, so it's just like the, um, he's wearing his fucking sunglasses at night. Yeah. So I can. Yeah. So I can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you can see that one of his eyes is gone. It's just like, they, they literally just folded the skin over it and stitched it shut. Nice. Well, I think that we got us some new... Recruits for the labor pool, boys. I I uh, I don't do physical labor like it's bad for the cuticles. Oh, now you, you hold on a minute here, folks. We we're not exactly sure what's going on here. Okay, um, Wes, he kicks you in the face with one of the uh, these big shit kicker leather boots. Oh, not the face! <laughs> <laughs> hey, now we'll have none of that drawn iron. <laughs> Everybody draws their guns in return. Now, you got one gun. By my count, I got five. Pulls this huge, very modern, like, full uh, auto tactical shotgun off his back. Um... Racks the first uh, round into the chamber. You've never seen a gun like never. this. It, it it oozes menace. It's more. It's more of a cannon. Yeah. By my count, I got five, and I got Matilda. Is that uh, that Matilda right there? Yeah. Well, truth be told, my friend, you might have all them guns. But it's only going to take one bullet to put you down, and I know where I'm putting it. So unless you want that Matilda to be a widow, I say we let my friend here do a bit of talking. And he just starts laughing, <laughs> and we're going to cut away there. <laughs> and yeah, that, that's the mention of Virginia City. I'll just write down Rufus. <laughs> Remember Rufus. Hashtag remember Rufus. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys get this far away look in your eyes. And yeah. And Thousand yard stare. Salt looks at you. He's like, hey, gentlemen, gentlemen. So. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> will, will you assist me in. Uh... I was never much for book reading myself, but. Uh... I am. R- r- really? Are you illiterate, sir? That's very. Uh, that's fortunately very common now. No, but, no, no, no. Yeah. I, 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 I can read it. I've been reading him this. I pull out like a, an old uh, comic book. Tales of Disbelief. Legend of the Hobomets. <laughs> 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 you work in your Mutork references. I work in my Hobomancer reference. Just to cut all my Mutork references. <laughs> Did you know? Oh. Yeah, because the uh, all the references came out after we recorded Mutants in Orbit, mm. but before Mutant the Mutants in Orbit bit where Mutork actually uh, activated the Rift Drive came in. Uh, <laughs> so Incidentally, spoilers. if you go back and listen to all our Gravity Falls episodes, 
Mutark has been added into them <laughs> as he has changed the timeline. <laughs> That's brilliant. And then at some point he apparently went back in time or went into another dimension where he took over the dinosaurs. Because that makes sense. As one does. <laughs> Dude, it's TMNT. It's true. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. Anyway. Um, oh, yes, yes. I believe we have that one already. Oh. But okay, thank you very much, sir. I wasn't giving it away. I yeah, like that no. book. <clears throat> but, but all right, all right. Um, I, honestly, I, I could use more shells. Uh, finding ammo for this isn't easy. All right. You got us. Excellent, excellent. Come along, then. Virginia City's only a couple hours walk away. We should be able to get there before nightfall. Hmm. You don't have a uh, uh, a ride or well, legs? We used to have a ride. <sighs> how'd you lose the ride, flashback? <laughs> uh, Will! Uh, how'd we lose the ride, flashback? So somehow I imagine, like... Well, this is not like this is about six months later. Yeah. Uh, after we woke up, I have managed to piece together a car, or I found a working car, or something. Being the smart uh, one, I think. I think because you're a man of science, yeah. you piece together a steam car. Yeah, like it's like a. Again, Wes is going to pitch his favorite vehicle, and it's a Dodge Charger shell, but like running off of this Ghost Rock still around, right? Yep. It's a ghost rock powered oh. steam charger. And the, and the the boiler for it, like like the actual engine, the the boiler used to be like like a Thomas the Tank Engine style like little kids well, steam train um, from like a, a park that's sitting out of the hood. Finding raw ghost rock for that might be difficult, but what you can get is spook juice. Okay. And spook juice is distilled ghost rock where they've taken all of the useful traits out of it and got rid of the impurities and literally just turned it into gasoline. Right. So long as you're cool with the fact that your car sounds like it's way making the whales of the damned, it costs half the price of gas. Dude, I, I And has zero cars. emissions. I, I would be all over that. If that was a real gas right now, I would still be all over that. <laughs> Not once you find out what it actually does. I'll tell you later. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. But yeah, no, like it's an old, it's like an old. Uh, the anybody who's ever watched uh, anything off of the, sh uh, the the Motor Trend series Roadkill, it looks like the General Mayhem. So like mm. one panel's orange, the rest of them is like uh, one's blue, one's black, right? Big long car running off a of ghost rock, making like the most unholy no noise possible. Jacked up, so of course it can get over like, like yep. you know the desert and stuff like that. <clears throat> and now we have to figure out how we lost the car. Well, it's it's jacked up to get over all sorts of things. So immediately in the flashback, um, we see this car. Well, look, we hear the car, and we see sort of just like the blasted sky. Yeah. And then we see the car jump off something. We're not sure what. Uh, and then it lands in the middle of some marketplace. <laughs> um, and then it cuts to the interior of it as we're fish hailing and going through, uh, going through like stalls and things are going up over the hood. Now, listen, I did not know that she was married, all right, my friend? I, 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 I swear to God, I did not know that. <laughs> Are you, are you freaking kidding me? Are you kidding? Usually it's my job to get us into this kind of stuff. Well, you know what? I, I, I'm just saying, ever since that, that thing with that, that idol you found, things have been awfully straight. Oh, hold on a sec. Bang, 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 bang. Um, and then you, uh, the car stops, and you just see it moving, uh, it, like everything moving past you stops, and then you look, ar uh, it swings around. And we drift the, around. No, no, no. Oh, like okay. the camera pans around outside the car. And, like, everyone's cleared out of the marketplace. And standing in the middle of the road um, is a woman. She looks like she's about 20, 25. Uh, shaved completely bald. Um, she's wearing, a like, a long duster over um, military fatigue. Over, like, sewed together military fatigues. And she's holding out a hand... And the car is not only stopped, it's levitating like a half inch off the ground with the wheels still spinning. Okay, boys, I think you've had enough fun for one day. Now, now, Ma Marianne. No, I, I, I have a name for her. Okay. We, we have our Patreon Oh, list. yes, we do. Uh, she is Marshall Moran. Now, now, Marshall... I know that that I caused your, your sister a great deal of trouble, but I I, sw I swear that this is all a big misunderstanding. If you call the rest of your boys off and, and put us down, we'll, we'll just be on our way. Wade Stone, you're going to get out of there right now. Then you're going to get what's coming to you. 
I open the door for him. <laughs> Thank you. Not the car. Anything but... Do you know how hard I worked on this? Uh, see you in there too, Jonathan Change. Damn it! <sighs> listen, listen. They, they need to get out of here as bad as we do. All right, we're coming out. And you, you jump down. The car's levitated an extra foot off the ground in, the, uh, in this time. Look underneath it. Yeah, I need to change the strut on there. All right. Uh, and at, once you're out of the car, she makes a fist. And the car implodes on it. That was uncalled for! What would the car ever do to you? Come on. Wade Stone, and in case you ever think of looking at my sister again... Keep in mind that I am fully capable of doing this. And she just brings her uh, um, her hand up, jerks her head around, and the ball of junk flies off into the distance. You've made your point, ma'am. And you boys will be out of prim by nightfall. And she walks away. Don't suppose you could give us a ride? <laughs> and we'll cut. <laughs> Cuts to uh, Jonathan Change giving, like, the stink eye to Wade. She didn't tell me, I swear. <laughs> That's why you asked. She was wearing 15 bloody rings. That's not a giveaway. Oh, never mind. Sorry. We're sorry, sir. We're more than happy to do this for an exchange of well, goods and services. Wonderful. I do have a vehicle, however. I am... I have a certain ration of gasoline, and I am maintaining it at this time to, uh, for the trip back to Sacramento. Then we're walking. Yeah, it's not like we're going to get any fuel. Mm. Yeah, all right. And he leads you out of town. Now, the good thing about this particular part of Nevada is that you're far enough away from Vegas that the roads aren't completely obliterated by ghost rock bombs. Yeah. Nobody thought to bomb Reno, because it's Reno. It's a, I, I hope none of my friends who live in Reno hear that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and the guards let you out. Like, there, there's actually the formal militia and, like, the city guards outside the gates and then into, like, the outskirts, of, patrolling the outskirts of town. Yeah. And you walk, and it's a kind of an overcast day. No rain, because it's, you know, Nevada. Yeah. But you're just... Walking down the highway, Salt begins to just hum to himself. So, uh, this here, uh, this, uh, cache of, uh, data? Oh, yes. What what exactly are we looking for? Now, I, I understand you can have a lot of books real small now on chips and such. Is that what we're looking for, or is this like a, like a bookshelf? I'm given to understand that during the uh, destruction of Virginia City, at least one building formerly owned by the Comstock Mining Company was left undamaged. Say that again? The who? The Comstock Mining Company, yes. That can't be a coincidence. <sighs> nope. Uh, all right, and uh, what's, what sort of information are we uh, looking for, friend? I personally believe it to be their records department. All right. So, uh... Books. Books. All right. Really books, yes. boring books. Yeah. <laughs> books, reports, etc. We can learn so much about uh, life here before the war and possibly about the movement of Ghost Rock in the area. And really, we're just preserving uh, information that would otherwise be lost. I mean, think about it. The scavengers in Virginia City would just use this fire uh, material eventually. Yeah, I yeah. guess we are saving it for posterity. Mm-hmm. Uh... You you ever thought about writing, Mr. Salt? About writing? Yeah, not not just collecting books, but making them. Well, I mean, we do have certain archivists who are producing collected manuscripts at this time. Yeah, no, but I mean you. Well, why do you ask, sir? Oh, just curious, because if uh, the area's history is your area specialty, we might be able to wrestle up some experts for you. At well, least for a certain period. And how would you go about doing that? I mean, I've certainly been bothering everyone who would know anything about local libraries, museums, etc. Let me just say, I got friends in low places. Hmm. Are you talking about your um, Rufus's gang? Or, uh, oh, we're or definitely talking about the two of you. Uh, it's, I'm talking about the two of us. Um, but also, we are now friends with Rufus's gang. <laughs> Wes, how did you become friends with Rufus's gang? I um. 
I imagine that I, I, I get up, like, the kick put, put me back into that bilge water. Or whatever we crawled out of. Yeah. Right? And, like, my, my clothes is ruined. Like, I, I, lo- I look like hell. And you lost your Gatling pistol. And, yeah, I reached for, well, I'll fix this. I reached to, like, my holster and I'm like, Hey, Rufus. I challenge you. You challenge me? Yeah, no guns. <laughs> oh, you've been called out, mister. Okay. He takes the shotgun, shoves it into the arms of one of the bikers. Mm-hmm. Alex, you hold on to that. All right. I re- and I'm reaching into my pocket as I walk up. Are you going to pull the not so trusty boot knife? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have a, a, a better idea. Uh huh. And I pull out pencil, crossword puzzle. Whoever give, finishes their puzzle first wins. How would you have a crossword puzzle that's still together after you've been submerged in water? I don't know. I'm grasping at straws. Otherwise, it's the, the not so trusty boot knife. <laughs> I think you may have to go on the not so trusty boot night. Yeah, I pull out the, the like okay, then I pull out the thing. Yeah, you pull out like this ruined book of crossword puzzles. Well, there's someone there was that idea. <laughs> and out comes the not so trusty boot knife. Give me a roll. Uh, what am I rolling? Uh, you're rolling your fighting. Uh, your nimbleness plus your fighting brawl. So you're just gonna roll two d10 straight. I do have fighting brawl on two. Yeah, but you're you're using the knife. Five. And a one. Mm-hmm. God. Yeah, that's a... Oh, boy. It's another 12. Wow! Like, uppercut ki- literally knocks you on your ass as you're still trying to... You are you're you literally reach down to pull the knife out of your boot, and it sticks. <laughs> now, now Rufus is huge, right? Yeah. Like, this, he's a, a mountain He's of not a super soldier huge like Big Tim. Gosh, but, he's not quite Big Tim huge, but he's big. He's big. Um, He's, like, played by... Oh, shit. Uh, the guy playing... Um, the mountain? Uh, no, no. no that, that, um, that'd be... That would be Big Tim. Yeah. Um, no, but he's like, he's built hard. Like, um, the guy who played John Winchester on Supernatural, uh, who plays uh, um, uh, the guy on Walking Dead now. I know uh, you're talking about. Don't know I know who you're talking about, but yeah, it's just, yeah. I'm blanking. Oh, fuck. I'm going to have to look this up later. Um, so he's not like huge, huge, but he's like intimidatingly like broad shoulders, square jaw. Okay. I think as these guys have approached each other for their sort of, like, duel, Stone knows this isn't going to work. Um, so, like, the camera, like, cuts to, like, a shot over his shoulder at you guys approaching each other, and then swivels to him, backing up to one of the motorcycles. <laughs> and he's going because he sees a lariat. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I think as soon as he, as soon as uh, Change gets one in the kisser, um, Stone's going to throw the lasso and, and try to... Literally hogtie this guy in front of his gang and embarrass the hell give out of him. Give me a roll. Do you have some kind of, like, roping or... Sure lessons? don't. Okay, uh, well, give me a straight up... We'll call it... Um... Uh, you know what? Horse I'll, riding? I'll let you use deafness on this. Okay, great. I need a bunch of D12s. There are a bunch of D12s. There's one right there as well. Ah, excellent. There are four or five D12s on the table. That's all I have. They're not a die uh, type that come they up They love me. Uh, you rolled two twelves. So I rolled two twelves. I'm gonna another roll. Just roll these suckers up again. Uh, I got another twelve and a nine, <laughs> and rolling it again, I got a four. Twenty eight. Yes. Twenty eight. Uh, yeah. Turns out, uh, uh, Wade Stone is real good at calving. <laughs> Twenty eight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah. Whips the the sort of lariat around, and I, I'm imagining it's not like a proper lariat. It's like one of the like um, like aircraft cable loops they would use to like, like yeah. sort of like catch a dog now. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, spins that sucker around, gets it sort of around uh, around Rufus's shoulders, and he goes heel Rufus and hauls on it, <laughs> uh, and then yeah, hand over hand drags him, kicks him over, and hog ties him. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then, I mean, I got a 28. I think I have a little bit of... Uh, uh, I'll give you some narrative leeway A little there. bit of narrative leeway. Um, and then he's going to um, draw his pistol um, and point it at the rest of the gang and be like, 
y'all got a new boss now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and as this is all happened, I stand over there. For shots free. <laughs> <laughs> As you finally come up with this boot, you finally get up off the ground. You're still dazed. You you've got finally got the boot knife in your head. You're like warily waving it in front of you, and you it takes you a minute to realize what's happened, <laughs> and then you fall over, yeah. just just from having been concussed twice <laughs> in the same like five minute period. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> and that flashback will take you to the outskirts of uh, Virginia City as you've walked along the road. Nice. Um, listening to uh, librarian Nathan Salt humming the same song to himself like 12 times in a row. Ugh. And he's pretty much just humming the new... Uh, one of the I was, I was just going to say, Vegas. at this point, I kind of want to hear him roar. <laughs> <laughs> and you reach the outskirts of uh, Virginia City... And the first thing that you see as you uh, walk past the buildings is someone has taken old Rufus and they have slammed him up about five feet off the ground uh, from one of the buildings and he is literally melted into the con uh, into the concrete. No! <laughs> Rufus, do! Rufus! <laughs> um, yeah, toss the hat on the ground, falls to his knees. Because <laughs> I think in the intervening year, like, we got a bond, man. No, you got a bond. I never got along with him. <laughs> yeah, the, the dog bites, but he loves me. <laughs> well, I think we're going to end the episode right there. Because that's a good place to end it. <laughs> well, what's going to happen to these cowpokes next? And what are they going to find in the ruins of Virginia City? Who are they going to find? Whoever it is, I hope they're ready for vengeance. You'll have to come back next week to find out here on the Terrible Warriors. And I've been your marshal for this evening, Derek Bart for Chasing the Muse, and I'm joined with my two players, Will Mitchell and Wes on the 404s. Y'all come back now, you hear? The Terrible Warriors has new episodes every Tuesdays and Thursdays. Change in Stone will return every Thursday in March. So we'll see you back in the Wasted West, you hear? And if you come back to us on Tuesday, we're wrapping up Mutants in Orbit. It's our third tale set in the world of After the Bomb, and now we've gone off into space, Mutork has vanished in a ball of light, and our intrepid space animal mutant astronauts are heading to the moon to stop the bees from blowing up everything, because that's just the kind of game it is. And every other Tuesday this month, we have our new series chosen by Patreon supporters, Masks, the New Generation, set in the city of Halcyon, a city of superheroes going back generations. Our heroes are young, and everyone has an opinion of what they might become. But that's okay. That's not going to stop them from diving off a building and plummeting 50 stories to the ground. Oh, cliffhanger. Yeah, Ori took the term cliffhanger a little... literally. And later this month, recording this weekend, another game chosen by our Patreon supporters in our poll is the world of Norlandia. An improvised crime drama with no GM, four players, one victim. And an investigation that will go beyond death itself. It's an entirely new kind of game, and we're gonna play it here on The Terrible Warriors. That comes out later in March. And if you wanna be a part of helping to choose some of our future games, Every now and then we put up a poll on Patreon where you can vote. Any supporter that supports in any amount can participate in that poll. You may have heard some names in this game. Those are names of our Patreon supporters who have appeared as non-player characters in our campaigns now. So a big thank you to those supporters who've chosen to donate at that amount. If you're interested, we do have higher tiers available, including sending you postcards of the campaigns when they're completed, having access not just to the debrief and to the complete campaigns, but even becoming a member of the show and joining us here at the table. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine. We do offer one-on-ones with our GMs. 
The Terrible Warriors over the last five years have released almost 300 tracks on SoundCloud. We have over 60 campaigns that we have played, and I'm not bragging when I say the GMs that sit at our table are some of the most experienced GMs in the community. If you want to have a one-on-one -on -one session with them to help them plan your game, we offer that to our Patreon supporters as well. That's all at patreon.com slash terriblewarriors, and all of our campaigns, that 60 plus I mentioned, is available forever for free at terriblewarriors.com. They're broken down into albums, all the playlists are available, so you don't have to just scroll through endless pages of tracks, pick your favorite campaign, and go ahead and listen to it. It's kind of fun when a new listener joins the show and I see all the likes showing up on SoundCloud from a game from years ago. No one's going to get tired of Power Rangers, let me tell you that. Mm, I think we're going to be returning to that world again soon. Shane Fitzgerald's been telling me things. But enough teases here in the extra. I'm going to give you the credits. Today's Terrible Warriors, Derek Burrow, Wes Gunn, and Will Mitchell. And the adventures of Change in Stone will continue in one week's time as we return to the Wasted West and you return to the Terrible Warriors.